Welcome back, my name is Ben. So today when it comes to macOS, I'm happy to let you know that Apple has just released a new software update and that's macOS 26.2, the RC version. This update is actually pretty massive. For me, it comes in at 17.36 gigs and I was updating from macOS 26.1. That's probably one of the reasons why the update size is so huge but it brings about a new feature that I think is really practical. Other updates that Apple released alongside this, so we have iPadOS 18.7.3 and iOS 18.7.3 order versions, and then RC versions released alongside this. We have watchOS 26.2, we have VisionOS 26.2, tvOS 26.2, macOS 26.2, iOS and iPadOS 26.2. Most of these updates I do cover here on the channel at Half Men Aftech, so if you wanna keep up to date, definitely do subscribe so that you don't miss out. As someone who covers a lot of macOS betas, there's actually something unique about this release compared to the last three years of macOS. So with the previous macOS versions, once we enter into weekly release cycles, Apple usually tends to keep their weekly release cycles until the official version comes out. But with this exact release that we have today, it comes exactly two weeks after the previous beta, which was beta three had already switched over to a weekly release cycle. So it's kind of an out of schedule release, but it's good that we have it finally. In terms of what's new with this update, let's start with the software changes that are here. You can see macOS is taking 24.39 gigs and clicking on the info tab, you can see Apple Intelligence 13.14 gigs and the build number that we have with this exact version is 25C. Five, six. There's a new feature called Edge Light, and it's one of the most practical features that you're going to see once you update to macOS 26.2. So I have my iPhone here. I'll quickly just record so that I can show you the practicality of it. It adds a border of soft light around the edge of the Mac's display to illuminate your face in darkened rooms. Edge Light is meant to mimic the look of a physical ring light, which is why it's shaped the way it is. Edge Light uses the neural engine for positioning. It is optimally placed around your face in the video frame. Light color can be adjusted from warm to cold and intensity varies based on the ambient lighting. This feature works in many video conferencing apps like FaceTime among others and it's only available on Macs that have Apple Silicon. Another change that's here with this update has to do with sleep focus. So now when you go into your focus and you enable the sleep focus, you can see the bed color has been changed from green to this purplish look and what this does is it makes it uniform with what you have on the iPhone with iOS 26.2 just to maintain the uniformity. In system settings under the general tab you can see now under this airdrop subsection you have a new option that says known airdrop contacts and what this does is you automatically appear for 30 days to people you have shared a one-time code with. If you click here it will show open up your contacts and you can manage contacts that you can pretty much send that code to and instead of you having to pretty much change your airdrop from everyone or to contacts only if they have that code for 30 days they can be able to airdrop you which is a new feature that Apple has now added with this update if you open up the reminders app for the first time you're going to be welcomed by a new splash screen that you see right here and it tells you about urgent reminders where you can manage mark reminders as urgent, auto categories, suggested reminders and time zones. And if you click continue right here, you can see if you have any reminders right there. And if you click or try to add a new reminder, for example, it gives you the ability to choose a time and date. And now reminders app is getting an option to have an alarm go off when a reminder is due. It works hand in hand with the iPhone and this is all thanks to continuity. Something else that's new that I've been trying out is is Archiflow. It's a powerful to-do list application designed for busy professionals that serves as a balance between advanced task management app and a personal project management system. Archiflow's interface is clean and one of my favorite features is the various integrations that it allows you to do. So you can see if I go to the integration section, you can pretty much link your various accounts, whether it's Gmail, Outlook, Notion, or all these other that you have. Archiflow pretty much becomes a gateway between your and all these various accounts and provide one place 
to manage all. Archiflow also allows you to drag tasks onto your calendar and you can click on your task which gives you options to be able to add descriptions and add a project tag so that if this is related to another project it's easily consolidated. Archiflow has an AI assistant called Aki and this is found on the bottom right here and if you click on it you can pretty much see what it can do so it can assist with tasks such as blocking time off for work, booking calendar events or scheduling external meeting. It also gets better with time since it allows for voice commands. There's other additional features for example a focus mode for clarity on tasks, a planning feature to help structure the next day's tasks as well. It also has integration with shortcuts which many users are going to appreciate so Archiflow is best suited for busy professionals who want to invest a comprehensive calendar task manager and integrated to-do list with unified inbox for planning and organizing their work. So to give it a try and see what Archiflow can do for you check the link in the description of this video. The news app has some updates as well so when you look at the side tab right here you will be able to see that they've consolidated some of the things so now when you go to the search tab some of the other categories that used to be on the side tab have now been put into the search portion so now it, there's a section on top that you can choose between sports, puzzles, politics, business and food and at the same time the same sections is here in the bottom of the menu bar. When you open up the podcast app for the first time you're going to be welcomed by a new splash screen that's going to tell you about chapters which is something that's new on macOS 26.2 and easily navigate more episodes with automatically created chapters and podcast mentions. You can see and follow mentioned podcasts right from the play and transcripts and from this episode you can quickly access the links shared in a podcast on the episode page. If I go to this podcast for example you can see the links here are clickable. If there's mentions of other podcasts you can be able to click here and it will actually open the page of that podcast without you having to manually search for that exact podcast which is good and I think it saves time. Apple TV Plus has been updated so now you can see the app icon itself has been updated and this is not just a rebranding on the website it's actually the app and the inside software contents have been changed so you can see how the app icon looks and when you open up Apple TV Plus for the first time after you update you're going to be greeted by this plus screen with a new look and welcome to Apple TV and now if you click continue right there you can see the Apple TV Plus the plus tab has been removed so it's now called just Apple TV and the same is also true when you go into like the about you can see this app icon has also been updated if you click on TV and go into settings, the settings has also been updated to reflect this change. So now the changes that we talked about with the previous Mac OS 26.1 have been fully implemented with this update. Games has also been updated. So you can sort and filter by categories, size and more and controller support. So you can now navigate the games app with improved controller support which is pretty cool. I never knew you could do that. Track challenges and score if you click continue and then you go to this section right here. It allows you to choose and filter by different options now. So you can see design for you can choose different categories now. So if you want family, if you want board and so on, they are there. Apple arcades is there and then your friends is there. If you go to the search option, you can see the different categories, how they look right here. And if you go back to the home page, this is how it looks. With this update Apple seems to pay attention to the little stuff as well so check this out. So when an app is in a small screen just like this or is windowed and you press the volume up or volume down you can see where this pops up and the same is true when it comes to brightness but when you now go into full screen mode and you press your brightness up or brightness down as you can see right here the pop-up indicators have now been centered so that was brightness and now if I was to just hide, hide the top menu bar and go 
into Safari and click here and press the volume. You can see where this now shows up at. So it's centered. You can see the volume indicators and this is the brightness indicators. But the moment you expose your top menu bar, you can see it goes back to its old default position. So I like that it's now centered. I think Apple should do this for more app icons and it just gives you a center reference point to always look at for most of your other controls. Now, those are the new features and changes that are here with Mac OS 26.2. Before I forget, these are the Geekbench scores that I got. So on the left hand side, this is 26.2 RC, the exact version that I'm on right now for single core, I got 24. 31 and that's actually exactly the same score that i had on mac os 26.1 the official release i had 2431 they match exactly which is crazy i don't think i have heard this happen before and then when it comes to multi score you can see on um, 26.2 i had 10874 and on 26.1 official, I had 10,838. This is slightly higher, but the performance figures are just so close together. It doesn't seem like we took any performance hit so far. And this is doing the Geekbench scores after I let the Mac index and do everything in the background. So that's it for me for now. Let me know how you find this update. I'm going to be testing it now from the short time that I have between this today and when it's going to be officially released and most likely it seems like apple is going to release this update on this coming monday or tuesday so that's it for me for now if you like this video leave a like and subscribe and i'll see you in the next video